All right. So if you're an NHL EA developer, uh, designer, or anybody that works on the NHL 22 team or the previous teams, watch this video, please. All right. Let's get into it. Um, the AA development team obviously uh, has a reputation. Any of the games that come out, they always get criticized for being cash grabs and things like that. And sometimes those comments are rightfully you know, warranted. That's fine. But I want to talk about the EA NHL team because they get a lot of slack for things that I feel like aren't even in their control. Um, I'm pretty sure the, the, the development team would eliminate um, a pack-based game in terms of HUT and, and, and purchasing with real currency as soon as they could. Because these people, uh, when you go after um, the company, uh, when you go after the development team of NHL for being cash grabs, you're aiming at the wrong person. When you go after content creators for supporting these uh, companies, you're going after the wrong people. You're going, you need to go to the source. You need to go to EA. You need to go to EA themselves. And you need to talk to them and say, stop trying to make money off of me. Of course, they would stop making money off of you if you stopped buying hut packs, John, in the basement of his mom's rental. Uh, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Okay, but seriously, uh, it's unfortunate that these developers get the slack and the hate for things that are out of their control, that the that EA basically tells them you have to have a uh, pack buying system in the game. If you don't, there's no point of having the game out, basically. I, I'm pretty sure that's how EA's conversations go. So I don't blame the developers for having that. Uh, there are a lot of things that are out of their control and there's things that I don't even know what's behind the scenes that I'm criticizing them for, I'm sure, that they don't deserve, deserve to be criticized about. So let's talk about this year's game. Uh, I want to talk about NHL 22 because I feel like people are criticizing it before the games even come out. Uh, ironically though, uh, when the NHL 22 beta came out, a lot of people were really positive about it. A lot of people felt like the game was better and there were some things really going well for it. And some, most people who were playing the beta liked it. But then once the beta ended, there was a period of time where people were kind of like, oh yeah, the game's going to be good. And then all of a sudden, almost like, you know, two or three days later, boom, everyone's back to being, oh, this game's going to be the same copy and paste, NHL 14.8, NHL 15.9, whatever, whatever people say online. But Why? I don't get it because people were com you know, commenting and saying this game's going to be garbage. And I was one of them. I have a video up here where I was saying that NHL 22, the tr first or original trailer that I saw, I said the game's going to be garbage. I said the game looks the exact same. And even in the gameplay trailer that I watched yesterday, the game looks the exact same. Besides the graphics enhances and maybe some of the passing, the game looks the exact same. But that's not exactly a bad thing. If the game looks practically the same, in terms of gameplay, not in terms of graphics or overall experience, you know. If the game looks the exact same, it's not necessarily a bad thing. I told a friend of mine who didn't watch the trailer yet, I'm not sure if he even did still, I said to him, I said, the gameplay trailer looks practically the same as NHL 21. But I reassured him that the game doesn't feel the same because I played the beta and trust me, the game does not look, or sorry, it does not play like it looks. That makes sense? NHL 22 is a very different game. And I think people are critiquing it before they even see it. Another thing I notice is people are so fast to judge the game when they forget about what happened in the past. Uh, if you've been around for NHL, I've been around for NHL for, oh boy, um, like 10 years, 11 years maybe. Uh, not that long actually compared to some people. If you remember NHL 15, it was a terrible game. If you're a developer, I'm sorry, but that is reality. And I'm sure you're aware of it. And I'm sure, you know, all these games that have come out since it have been stepping stones to rebuilding the trust of the community. People forget about NHL 15, like it never happened. They're like, it was so bad that we're just going to forget it, which is fine. But you also need to remember that it was a thing. And you have to remember what has happened since then. There's a lot of really good stuff that's happened in NHL since NHL 15. But why am I bringing up NHL 15 when we're coming into 22? NHL 15 came out during a jumping period between consoles. And PS3 to PS4. Xbox One, you know, so on. It was a terrible game. You lost tons of features from NHL 14. Slow graphics were not bad. Menus were bad. No game modes. 
It was an overall pretty much a shit show. But Ancho 22, something that I've noticed immediately is it's like Ancho 21. That's what people say. It's like Ancho 21. But that's not necessarily bad. That means that's a good thing, right? That's a good thing. It's a new console. You're jumping to a brand new console. It's NHL 21 again, but with new things, with new features. You're not losing anything. You got your Bia Pro. You're getting a new Bia Pro, in fact, if, as I've heard, new storylines to it. You're getting uh, updates to franchise, which don't seem like too much, but you know what? That's okay. I'll take a new lines of Bia Pro than I will in franchise, let's be honest. Bia Pro is a big selling point. Uh, people love that. Uh, so if you can keep on working on that, that'd be great. Um, but seriously, going from NHL 21 to 22 is practically the same, but for a good reason. You're not losing anything on new consoles. You're not going to lose game modes. You're not going to lose abilities. You're not going to lose things. The game's going to run better and it's just going to be a good experience. I just don't understand why people are so fast to just say this game's garbage because it's the exact same. The games could go backwards. I think people forget that. Things could get worse. Things are always improving at EA, at, at the EA NHL development team. Things are always improving. The reason people complain so much is because when they look at NHL and the video game and, and the way that the game is made, they think, oh, it should be innovative and it should be different every single year. If the game was innovative and different every single year, they wouldn't have enough time to do it. It just simply plain out wouldn't be possible. It wouldn't be possible to make the game in a year and add all these things, these crazy wackadoo crap like uh, winter classic mode, all-star mode, uh, which need their own coding. Remember, this is all coding. This isn't just like I write it into a system, the system writes it for me. These people have to sit there day in and day out and test these systems and make sure they implement properly with zero issues because I guarantee you Bobby in his mom's caravan is going to say, listen, this game sucks ass because it bugged out when I was in my all-star game. So listen, at the end of the day, you have to work hard on the game and there's tons of ideas and tons of features that everybody wants but not all of them are suitable and all of them need to be uh, created from the ground up, but not with the new Frostbite engine. With the new Frostbite engine, you're able to sort of take things from previous games, other games like FIFA and other things like that, and implement them into the NHL game. Um, for example, obviously we have X Factor, which is a giant thing from Madden now in NHL. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? You tell me. Because to me, it looks like, yes, it's a copy and paste. But it also means that they'll have more time to work on other things. If you can steal certain things from other games and impl implement them into NHL and then work on brand new ideas at the same time, I'm all for it. I will, do, I will buy the game. Because if it means that you get to spend less time on creating things from the ground up and, uh, and more from gathering information from other games... It will be good. It, it will be good. And I, I like it. All right. So to recap what I just said, essentially, people complain about how the game's always the same every year, yet they always forget that this game comes out every single year. If that doesn't make sense to you, here's a great example. Even a game like Cyberpunk who, that took years and years to develop and came out finally after being rushed, mind you, being rushed to make the game, was, well... The story was good, but the, the game was garbage. Terrible bugs. I had a pretty bugless uh, experience, but I still had bugs. Terrible experience. So, what makes NHL have to endure more hate about their game when they have less time to make a game and it turns out, well, it's not the same genre, but you get what I mean. Video games usually have years to develop. Call of Duty, 2K, EA... Uh, sports the franchise come out of the game every single year i'm not excusing certain things and elements from games that should be added by now like roster sharing and the ability to share sliders across uh different uh, communities that should be a thing i don't know why that's still not a thing it seems rather simple but anyways it's not a thing so it's simple why not do it but at the end of the day, like because you don't have tons of new features in game modes doesn't mean that they're not coming or that they're not able to do it. It just means that they don't have time. You get what I mean? Like at the end of the day, if, if EA, the company, mind you, the company decides these things, I'm sure if the NHL development team 
got the chance to spend more than a year on this game, they would rewrite this game and they would make it probably the best game they've ever released. But they don't get that chance. They don't because they have to develop a game every year. So at the end of the day, all I'm saying is don't go after the developers. Don't blame the developers. My point is leave the developers alone because at the end of the day, they're doing a job. They're trying their best and it's not their fault that they have to release a game every year. Okay. Lastly, I want to say, I want to touch on one more thing. Um, the NHL community really wants GM Connected. Like, really, really badly. It's like their favorite thing. And a part of me feels like that's nostalgia, that they really want uh, game... Uh, sorry, they really want GM Connected for the nostalgia, not really for uh, the, uh, the ability to actually play it. Uh, but let's say uh, EA was going to do it this year. How many consoles are out right now? Let's see. PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and S. That's four different consoles to fight with. And we know that EA isn't going to implement a brand new cross-platform play thing, which would be ridiculous because who knows why. So because that's not in the game, why on earth would they even bother making GM Connected when there are going to be four different consoles playing at the same time? GM Connected. Come on. Like, really? Like, seriously? All right. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching the video. If you are a developer who watches this video, I actually do appreciate all the work you do. I don't blame you guys on a majority of things that happened. There are some things that I seriously think you should consider putting in the game that I feel like could be done, such as roster sharing and slider sharing. It should be it should be rather simple, something that doesn't seem like it should take too much time. Uh, but at the end of the day, a lot of the things you've added in NHL 22, I am really looking forward to. Graphics, stick physics, uh, and overall X Factor. I look forward to it. I am excited for the game. Thank you, developers. That's it. All right. I'll see you guys later.